YouTubeites. This is a new show. I'd like to welcome you to Ubuntu BSD Unix et al. This is a new Linux show uh, aimed uh, from, or her, not aimed, set from a developer's point of view. I looked around the internet to try to see uh, what types of Linux shows were around. I saw a lot of really good shows. And what I didn't want to do is I didn't want to do another review show. I didn't want to go up there and just simply be uh, reviewing Linux. What I want to do is, and I am doing this, is get into development. So this will be a discussion along the lines of developing in Linux. So if you're interested in uh, developing Linux, if you're interested in, or thinking about developing in Linux, uh, and because Android is Linux, I will be developing Android apps as well. So uh, I will be going from the Linux development, standard Linux development, into the Android uh, development uh, later on in the in later episodes uh, as the show progresses. Um, I did uh, actually uh, develop my uh, IDE, my integrated developers, developers envi or development environment. Uh, it's 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 kind it's kind of tricky because a lot of people a lot of software advertises itself as IDE, uh, an integrated uh, develop development environment, but they're they're far from complete. So rather than uh, choose a single environment, what I did is I kind of understood how the IDEs were put together. And began to put together my own IDs based on the uh, and turn basically the, the the desktop environment into an entire IDE. And this is one thing you can do with Linux uh, that you can't do with uh, Windows. Uh, well, I've heard you can do it now with Windows, but this is something that was sort of, sort of standard on on Linux. Is you can have multiple desktops. So I set one of my desktops as the development desktop. And rather than using one application, I chose a variety of applications to use. Uh, for the Google apps, the Google API, and Android, I chose Eclipse. For uh, Java and XML development, I'll be working in NetBeans. And for the Linux, uh, Qt development, I'm particularly interested in the, uh, the KDE environment. I'll be using Monkey Studio. These are the uh, environments that I've sort of put together, uh, and I'll, I've got them sort of arranged on the desktop so that they're pretty easy. To, it's like having multiple drawers in a desk. Uh, you can go and pick and pick and choose what you want uh, and the features with, uh, that you want from each one of them, uh, and you sort of can work with them back and forth. Uh, that, that's sort of how how I'm doing it now. If at a later point in time I think I can sort of sort of write my own IDE and put these different elements together, then I will do that. But for now, uh, the, uh, I want to start covering the basics in Linux. And that's what you need to do a lot of times. Is sometimes, yeah, the basics, yeah, they're basic. Eh, who cares about them? But they're important. The basics, if the, you don't have good fundamentals, you really can't really build from there on out. The fundamentals have to be there. And once your fundamentals are there, then you can build on out. Like, uh, I'll give an example, and, uh, and this is sort of some of the complaints I heard uh, from people who uh, came from Windows, tried Linux, and then went back to Windows again. Their complaint was that Linux was too buggy. Well, I was on Windows, and I actually left Windows uh, went, uh, uh, on, the, on the XP version, because uh, I got tired of the pirateware and all the different things that ha that kept going wrong, and so I moved into Linux. I first went to GNOME, and then after I tried GNOME, uh, I found and tried KDE. So the first install was Ubuntu. Then after uh, Ubuntu, I installed KDE. Uh, I installed KDE or Kubuntu on top of uh, Ubuntu, and then decided that it was Ubuntu that I liked. Uh, that it was. Kubuntu that I like, not not Ubuntu, and so I moved from the Ubuntu's GNOME environment to the Kubuntu's KDE environment. But when I did move there, I found that there were programs that were better programmed 
that were better developed in Gnome on the G under the GDK uh, environment, GTK I should say uh, environment that didn't exist sort of uh, in the KDE environment. And so I've worked on the desktop so that I've got a lot of GNOME software, GNOME applications running in KDE. And so this is where my development sort of going to take its focus is merging the two desktops, uh, uh, staying with the KDE environment but bringing a lot of the GNOME functionality into KDE. This is the particular route that I want to go in. Right now, uh, I'm taking my time in documenting and sort of laying out the path I want to take. It's sort of like a, um, it, it, it's a cross between a, a, a pseudocode and a flowchart. It's sort of like, uh, if you want to call it, these are the blueprints for where I want to go. Uh, th and this is before the code. So I did uh, my survey. I looked to see what was out there. Uh, what I'll be doing for next week is uh, I'll be going back and fixing up my Launchpad account. I'll be upgrading it and connecting it to my Facebook and the YouTube account so that uh, the Ubuntu BSD Unix et al. is uh, can be seen in the Launchpad uh, channel. And then from there, I've already chosen uh, packages that I want to maintain and put into my PPA. And for those of you who don't know what PPA is, uh, PPA is uh, the Ubuntu Kubuntu uh, way of maintaining packages. I if you want to uh, have a particular package that that's not offered, you can type in a PPA uh, into the resource uh, resource uh, uh, box. I use almost exclusively now Synaptic for this, even though on um, 11.10 and 11.4, the it was pack it was K package kit on uh, on 11.4. It's Muon now. Muon has a horrible hanging problem, so I have uninstalled Muon as the package manager for uh, 11 uh, 11.10, and I'm using Synaptic as the package manager for 11.10, and it works beautifully. It works it, the what Synaptic allows you to do that all the others don't allow you to do is if something happens, if something goes wrong, the process is recoverable. It doesn't crash and hang the whole system. Muon, when something goes wrong, it crashes and hangs the entire system. You have to do a full cold reboot. You have to pull the plug and then pull, put the plug back in and restart the computer. You cannot even press the uh, off button to turn off the computer. That's how bad Muon hangs. It, 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 this, Muon reminds me of a, of a Microsoft product. Uh, something that one little program that will cause the entire system to come down. So what I did is uh, I removed Muon. I have Synaptic in there. And I do all my upgrading and uh, Systems maintenance with uh, with uh, Muon. Uh, so the, it, it, with, with not with Muon, with, with Synaptic. 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 What it allows you to do, and this is this is what I find absolutely amazing, is it gives you as you through the install process, it gives you access to the terminal. So that if something goes wrong, you can always default back to the terminal and deal with issues on the terminal level, uh, rather uh, rather than having to, to deal with a GUI or hoping the GUI will figure itself out. And so, this is what I'm saying is that a lot of the basics that should have been taken care of in KDE haven't been, but exist within GNOME. But for some reason, they really didn't, they didn't port uh, Synaptic to KDE. Even though, and I think it really doesn't need any porting. It really, it, I, I don't really see any problem with Synaptic running uh, in the KDE environment. 
uh, even though it's a gnome, it's a gnome, uh, it's a gnome applica application. I haven't had any problems with it. I haven't had any issues with it. Uh, it works as well as the command line app get or aptitude. It works just as well as that. Uh, if I need to find a particular package or a particular uh, offending piece of soft, uh, offending piece of a library or anything. Synaptic finds it, removes it, and I can do a reinstall with it. So then I can I can do the repair easily from the KDE desktop. And I'm assuming that that because Synaptic is a GNOME product, it's a known app, known a GNOME application that you could do the exact same thing in GNOME that you're doing in KDE. So this is particularly where. Uh, I intend to go with my Linux development. For those of you who want to know about the show, why it's called, uh, why it's titled uh, Ubuntu BSD Unix et al., it has to do with uh, the uh, Linux environment. Ubuntu is a flavor of Linux. As I said, it uh, uses the GNOME desktop. Linux came out of BSD. Its core is BSD. Unix came out of BSD. So that's why so we have is this, the environment that I'm using uh, Ubuntu, but I'm using the, the KDE desktop, uh, so it's for me it's Kubuntu. But GNOME is the entry point, is your entry point there. And it's the most popular package. So it's Ubuntu. BSD is the core package. And for those who want an in interesting tidbit, uh, uh, tidbit of uh, information, Mac OS is a port of BSD. So if you're on a Macintosh, you're running a version of BSD. Unix, which was the precursor of uh, Linux, but the proprietary form developed by AT&T and then later on by SCO, uh, Due to its copyright issues, uh, that platform was more or less abandoned, although it is still there, but right now, the because of the way open source has gone, uh, the offerings in the open source community, uh, which is Linux, is a lot more, uh, how should I say, fruitful or flavorful because they use all the different types of Linux. There's a whole variety. There's Mint, there's Poseidon, there's Fedora, there's Red Hat, uh, there's SUSE, there's... I, I, there, that's just five of the packages I can think off my hand. Uh, the five of the different flavors of... Uh, oh yeah, there's Debian. Uh, that I can think of. These are the, they call the different Unix, the Linux flavors. So basically, Unix, which was BSD, evolved into Linux because of the copyright issues. And then the, that Linux core, which was based on BSD, because it wasn't able to finish its own, own core, so it built the core on top of uh, of the BSD core, or in, as, as an integration to the BSD core, then spread out from there into a whole variety of flavor, flavors. The two main package, uh, uh, sp uh, the two main package avenues is either uh, Red Hat, which is which produces the RPM packaging, and the other main branch is Debian, which includes uh, Ubuntu, Kubuntu. Um, I think it's uh, Gen 2. There's a whole variety that have literally sprung off of the Debian platform, and they use the Debian packaging system that one is, uh, the uh, Red Hat uh, package system uses RPM. Debian, u Debian uses the package system DEB, and that's the sort of the last three uh, n the last three letters uh, uh, after the dot, sort of that, that sort of finishes off the file. So, 
this is the path that uh, Linux has taken in terms of development, taken in terms of development, and because of the flavors, uh, you you really can't in the title list all the different flavors. Otherwise, you'd end up with uh, with, a, with a title that, that, that's uh, quite reminiscent of Monty Python, where they you know the title just literally runs on and on and on forever. Uh, so to take care of that, the E T A L or et al takes care of that. And so it says basically Unix, which is one flavor of of, of Linux, BSD Unix, and et al takes care of the whole field uh, of Linux uh, different uh, flavors and distributions. So this was it for today. I'm aiming uh, to have shows run between 15 and 20 minutes. And we will be looking at some uh, development issues, some desktop issues, some path and development issues. Uh, in, the, in the next few shows, but this is episode 000. So, this is the anchor, this is the pilot, this is the beginning of Ubuntu, Ubuntu BSD, Unix, et al. And I'd like to, like to thank you for joining, joining us today, and we will see you next week, once a week, for Ubuntu, BSD, Unix, et al.